morning, friends. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo and Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys and you ladies, this literally does not work. So let's get open for business here and let's wake up my football gods. Good morning, everybody. I hope everybody is doing well on this Taco Tuesday. It is one step closer to the draft. Can you believe that we are sitting here two days, 10 hours, 23 minutes, and 45 seconds away from the draft? We are finally about to get this thing going on. And the Dallas Cowboys today at 12 p.m. are scheduled to have a press conference. Mike Fisher was actually hinting at uh, something going on tomorrow, um, which is today. Um, I'm thinking it is about Sean Lee's retirement press conference. Um, I may be wrong. It might be a pre-draft conference uh, call where we go ahead and hear all the great things that the Dallas Cowboys are thinking for the draft. Probably not. But we'll find out what it is. I'll actually be out looking at a job today. Um, So I won't be able to carry it live, but I will, once I get back, give you the highlights of what happened. So this may be the mock destroyer. Um, that's happening right now. Yesterday, the Atlanta Falcons said that people were beginning to call them about um, Julio Jones. Now, that's different than them saying that we're accepting calls about Julio Jones, and that might have been them saying that we're open for business without trying to mess up a relationship in case it doesn't work out with Julio Jones. Well, today, they said they are accepting calls from other teams because of their difficult cap situation. So there's two ways that you can look at this. One, anybody who thinks that the Cowboys would have the opportunity of trading up for Kyle Pitts. And of course, here's the thing that that mystifies me. I'm trying to understand this and, and just follow along with my logic. I know I'm not that bright and not that logical, but it's funny how it seems like the consensus is that the Dallas Cowboys are really the only team that should move up to get Kyle Pitts. That the Cowboys, it seems like that is the guy that the Dallas Cowboys should be focused on. And I'm not saying that Kyle Pitts isn't a great going to be a great player because, you know, if, if we are to believe his body of work and his body and projections, then he will be a beast. I'm not saying that he's not. But don't you find it funny that they're not saying that the Green Bay Packers – should, should trade up to try and get Kyle Pitts, that, that uh, you know, the Bears, even though they need a quarterback, that they, they shouldn't trade up to get Kyle Pitts because, you know, he's a generational player. It, isn't it funny that you don't hear that the Giants should trade up and get Kyle Pitts or, or Washington to trade? That, that only the Dallas Cowboys are the ones that should trade up knowing that we have other needs? Basically, they're just saying, oh, don't worry about your other problems. Just get that guy because he's going to be great. But why aren't they saying that about other teams? You wonder that at all? That the only team that should trade up for Kyle Pitts should be the Dallas Cowboys. To me, seems like the usual... Let's get paid because of the Dallas Cowboys. This is a great scenario. We can get the Cowboy fans all excited about this and, you know, hungry for it and calling for it and everything else. And, you know, we'll get all the clicks because he's an exciting, dynamic player. And, and in the end, if they moved up, if they moved up, they took the first or second and maybe Michael Gallup and moved up because Jerry Jones listened to all of us, then that'll screw the team over because then they won't be getting any players for the defense to like third round. Yeah, yeah, may, may, and maybe they'll take a hit on their offense and get rid of Michael Gallup. And, and then next year what we can do is say, boy, the Cowboys were so stupid trading up to get Kyle Pitts when they had all these needs on their defense. Why would you do something stupid like that? That's what they're hoping for. Let's be real. That's what they're hoping for. So don't fall for it. But – there's a couple ways to look at this with Atlanta, okay? Because, you know, people have been speculating Atlanta's pick is for sale. They're going to go ahead and trade that pick. Boom. And that's going to change the dynamics of the draft. 
this to me says that trading Julio Jones, there's two ways to look at it. If you trade Julio Jones, you get rid of that uh, cap hit of his, $23 million. And this is where they look at it and say, he's an aging veteran. Our team is a long ways from winning. We need to reduce our salary cap and start over. And the way you could replace, if you still think that you have an opportunity to win now, then maybe you take Kyle Pitts and he becomes your new Julio Jones. Julio Jones that you originally traded up two number ones to get. You look at it and say, I can get this guy. He can step into the role of Julio Jones because he's he's a tight end and, and really a receiver's capability. And you can look at that that way and say, now we've got an extra, you know, $18 million to play with. Maybe we can sign some of these players like a KJ Wright or, you know, Sheldon Richardson on our defense and be a little better. And these are the kind of decisions that you have to make. Or, or you go completely outside of the box if you're Atlanta and you say, we're here at the number four pick. We need to start over and look at rebuilding the team from now. And this gives us an opportunity to go ahead and draft a young franchise quarterback because we think that this year is stocked full of quarterbacks. We'll draft a quarterback with the number four pick. We'll trade Matty Ice to somebody like, say, San Francisco. Or excuse me, not San Francisco. Um, to somebody like the Bears. Sorry, the San Francisco already traded up. But trade him to somebody like the Bears and get more cap relief and start the process sooner than later. And see, this is where you look at it. You know, the idea for the Cowboys would make sense if you're trading up for one player, if you believe that you're one piece away from making a Super Bowl run. That's where it makes sense. If you are rebuilding, then you look for ways to clear cap space and get something in return. And so that's why now all of a sudden you have to look at the Atlanta Falcons now just screwing over everybody's mock drafts on this situation because now the speculation will be is, A, who's going to trade for him? And what they're hoping to get is at least a second-round pick. I believe that you can at least get a second-round pick for Julio Jones, um, which then means – one of these teams that may have been looking at drafting a receiver may get Julio, which means that's going to change what they do. So if you've done all your mock drafts and put in your final mock drafts and everything else, <laughs> you better get out your pad and paper because you got to start that shit over because now the wild card is in. For the Cowboys, you know, they have us, of course, locked in on Patrick Sertan. They have us locked in at Patrick Sertan which means to me we won't get Patrick Sertan. That's just the way it kind of usually goes, that it, the people that they pick never come into fruition. I still believe that the Cowboys are going to try and get back to Jerry Jones's roots, which is wheeling and dealing and trying to make, you know, a dollar out of 15 cents. I think Jerry Jones might be looking to trade back, and here's where – Here's where this whole thing, in my mind, I, I don't like to do mock drafts. But if Atlanta is shopping Julio Jones, then they're not going to trade their pick. They're not. So that means if you are trying to trade and get a quarterback, that's one less team and opportunity that you can guarantee that you'll get one of the top four with getting that pick because that one's not there. The next trade partner would probably be Miami. Miami they decide they want to take a quarterback or they may be looking to go ahead and make some more movement. Although they just traded with the Eagles to get there at six. I think they're going to go for a tackle or if Kyle Pitts is able to take Kyle Pitts. So then you start looking and saying, Hmm, Hmm, maybe this is more advantageous for the Cowboys to be in a position for somebody to take their spot. 
I, for one, am a strength in numbers guy. People will say we got 10 picks, but, you know, Xavier Woods was a six-round pick. Um, Anthony Carter, I'm sorry, uh, Anthony Brown, fifth-round pick. We don't have a lot of lights-out players that we've gotten in the fifth and the sixth and the seventh round. So I'm not going to really count those. I'm going to look at your first, your second, your thirds, and maybe your fourths as players that will be able to be ones that can come in to help improve this defense. I'll especially say second round and third. So if I can find a way that I can still have that middle of the pack first round pick and gave me a second, I'm doing that. I'm doing that. There's enough good players out here that can help this team right there at 15. That's just me. All right, y'all. I've got Joe Barty's I got to work on and getting out of here. Um, this one is the last one that is finished at the moment, and that one's going to Eddie. Eddie. Eddie B. Um, he's the winner for that one. And don't worry, I've got eight more that are in the process of being built, and I'll have them done before the draft because we'll be doing more giveaways at the draft. As always, friends, I want to thank you all for watching. Come, oh. Thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report. And the only thing else I got to say is.